Hello everyone. In Idea 10.3, field statistics can now be generated from character fields. And what this essentially does is give us some points of interest that we can analyze and also drill down on. We look at character field stats in terms of two dimensions, and that is the number of blanks and the number of categories. And we see that when we click on character field, and there you have our two dimensions. Looking at the number of blanks, it may sound simplistic, but it's actually a very powerful ability. In terms of fraud detection, the number of blanks is what is usually termed an availability test. And this type of test will identify any gaps in the information, whether it is a customer number or a supplier number, which could be an indicator of fraud. So in this example, we can click on the number of blanks under the posted by field and see that this record was posted by nobody for an amount of $23,000. So this is a finding that we can then discuss with management and I can save this view to a database and give it a name. So we're gonna call it finding large payment posted by nobody. We can go back to the payments file and look at some of the other fields. And here under the authori authorization field, we see that there are three records um, under the number of blanks. If we were to drill down, we will see that there are three records that have no authorizer. So this is a finding as well. But notice that one of those records relates to the first finding. It's this one over here, the second record, where there was a blank under the posted by field. So sometimes when you're going through field statistics for a character field, you're going to see records in other statistics. And obviously, this is there is something here that, that needs to be uh, addressed with management. We can save this to a database, call it finding. payment authorized by nobody. Let's take a look at the number of categories now. This statistics helps give a sense of the data. For example, if you click on the number of categories for the field posted by, you automatically see how many people are allowed to post transactions. And according to this, it's 11. There are 11 records here. But notice that one of those records is blank, and this is definitely a problem. But looking down the list, you may determine that there are some other, uh, other IDs that don't look normal. For example, Jen, there's only one transaction uh, for that user ID. Maybe this is something you may want to bring to the attention of management. I noticed that this user ID, UUU, uh, is a test ID which is not allowed to post transactions. So this is definitely a finding. What I can do now is if I wanted to see the underlying transactions for UUU, I can click on it and drill down to a second level of detail. This is what is called a double drill down and it's a new capability in 10.3. So now I can save this to a new database and I can call it finding payments posted by test ID. Click OK. Another thing to note is that by looking at the number of categories, it's possible to see relationships between the fields. For instance, let's say you know that this organization has 60 suppliers based on your experience with the business. So looking at this field statistic, it's showing us that there is actually 63 unique supplier numbers in this database. Why the three extra supplier numbers? So that's a question. Furthermore, the number of records for the supplier number and the supplier name are not equal. It's 63 and 122. And logically, you would expect them to be the same. Now this may be due to a supplier number containing more than the supplier name or vice versa. So let's find out. Let's drill down on the number of categories uh, for the supplier number. And if we were to scroll down, 
Well, there you have it. You see that there are, uh, for supplier number 9999, there are 83 records associated with it. And if we were to drill down again, you will see that there are 83 suppliers using that same supplier number. This is clearly a data integrity issue. So maybe this is occurring, or maybe this occurred during a system conversion, and all of these supplier names were mapped to a default number. Or maybe people are overriding the system control by entering this dummy supplier number if they, if they don't know the one that they should be uh, mapping it to. Regardless, we could extract these uh, findings to a new database and let's say we can save it to, call it finding So 9999 misuse for multiple suppliers. So looking at the databases that I've created thus far, if we were going to go into the File Explorer, we will see that the child databases have been created, and these contain our findings. Uh, and these are all based on what we have reviewed through character field statistics. And we can discuss these with management. And note that we have not at all done any type of substantive test on this database. We haven't really interrogated the data uh, in a substantive manner. All of this has been done through field statistics, and it's all been exploratory in nature. So in conclusion, uh, character field statistics allow the user to find instances of incomplete records or anomalies. Uh, it aids us in gaining an understanding of the entire population and the relationships between the character fields. It helps us verify our assumptions about how the fields in the data work and identify anomalies that don't fit those assumptions. Thank you.